I usually end up taking my patterns over to Adobe Illustrator and get a real clean cut, precise pattern made up. But it always starts out with pen and paper and whatever the object is that you're trying to make it for. So I'll probably touch on the differences between making patterns for holsters and sheets and wallets and bags. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna focus on making a pancake sheath for this four and a quarter inch trapper knife. So this is my personal case trapper knife and I usually just carry it in my pocket, but I figure it's about time. I probably have something on my belt. So let's just walk through the steps of doing this. So I'm gonna start out on just some regular printer paper just so that we can get a really rough sketch and the basic size out. And then once we have like a fairly certain shape, then we'll take it into Illustrator and uh, print it off and then we'll glue it onto some poster board, oak tag, uh, chipboard, something just a little bit heavier stock that you can use over and over to cut out whatever you're making. You always want to start out by just tracing out the basic outline. And I'm going to flip it because I just remembered I want the fatter end of this thing to be sticking out the top. Okay, and since we're not making something that's flat as a sheet of paper, we have some depth here. So anytime you're making a holster or a sheath for something, you got to account for the thickness of the item. So with this one, at the fattest part, it's about three quarters of an inch. Which means we gotta compensate for three quarters of an inch split between both sides. So half of three quarters of an inch is three eighths. I'll just make a few marks right here at three eighths of an inch going all the way around. So when I measure the distance between these two marks, it's pretty close to two inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say that the the width of the actual sheath part of this thing is going to be two inches wide. And uh, you have to account for that because if you don't, then the sheath is going to be way too tight on the knife. And it's going to make the leather expand this way, which will make the stitches come in this way. And it'll put way too much tension on the stitches that border this thing. So you want to give yourself a little bit of breathing room for this thing to kind of sandwich this thing nicely without making it too hard to pull in and out. So I'm just going to draw my vertical lines just so I have kind of a reference. We'll go two inches. I know that on this sheath I want kind of a wave shape on the top edge because the belt slots are going to be offset a little bit to create kind of an angle. Otherwise this thing will just be sticking straight up and uh, that'll make it a little bit more ergonomical on your belt. I don't want this top edge to come up too high because if you don't have anything to grab onto, these things are actually really hard to pull out of a sheath because there's not much to grab. So I want to be able to grab about that much of the knife when I'm pulling it out. So about right here. It's actually quite a bit lower than you would probably think, but I'm gonna do just kind of a freehand wave shape like this. I might actually change that up. It might be a little bit more drastic, but let's see where the slot punch holes are gonna go. So if this line right here is my stitch, then I know that the slot punches have to be on the outside of that. And I don't want it to be too close to the stitches. I like, I like my belt slots to be a little bit on the bigger side, um, especially when you're dealing with thicker leather, like nine, 10, 11 ounces. Um, usually about, three-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch away from the stitch. Yeah, one, two, three-eighths of an inch right here. And then I like my belt slots to be about two inches long. This will be something I can do really easily in Illustrator. So this will be our belt slot hole right there. Just so that we have kind of a indicator of what it is. Fill that in. I want to put another one of these in on this side. So we're going to go a quarter of an inch away from the stitch again. I think I'm going to go about three quarters of an inch higher on this side. So if I were to draw a line from over here, I'm going to go about three quarters of an inch up. That's a pretty big slot punch. It's not going to be very easy to find one that is uh, two inches, but even harder is going to be finding one that's two inches and three-eighths of an inch wide. So you can reach out to places like Texas Custom Dies and they'll make up an oblong hole punch exactly the size that you want. Uh, I like to just have a little bit of extra room in case you're dealing with a real heavy-duty gun belt, uh, something a little bit wider. 
but it'll still work for something narrower too. All right, and I don't think I left enough room on this top edge because I'm gonna want about a quarter of an inch to get to the stitch and then about another maybe a quarter of an inch to have room for beveling and the stitch and all of that that goes on in between. So this is about where the top line should be. We'll have it come up like that. It's about half an inch up from the top of the hole, so right here. So we're gonna go, this is our main line right here. We're just gonna take it up to that. Gotta go a little darker so we know which one's the real deal. Since we got about a half inch in between the punch and the edge of the leather, I'm just gonna keep that pretty consistent for the rest of the edge of this. Then I'm just gonna follow this shape, come down here. Now that I'm looking at it, half inch might be a little too much room. I might bring that in a little bit. All right, so that's kind of a general shape of what I'm going for, but I think it, now that I see it, I think it's a little too much space. I think we can trim things up just a little bit. Yeah, so we'll go like a quarter of an inch, about where that was. I'm gonna allow a little bit more room over here because it's gonna be coming down kind of a slope from there where this is all flat. Uh, so we'll probably go like three eighths of an inch down there. And uh, I don't know, we'll have to see. I, I might end up adjusting that even a little bit more, but that'll be a lot easier to do in Illustrator. This is just a pretty general shape and size of what we need. All right, it looks really messy, so I'm gonna hurry and trace it and uh, see if I can clean this up just a little bit. We got the knife here. I like to have real fluid, smooth lines around these things because it'll pay off when I'm over on the belt sander trying to clean these edges up. If you got any really sharp angles, it's gonna be a struggle to get in there. Cool, I'm liking that. I'll get the slot punches out. About like that. About like that. See, I might need to allow myself a little more room in here. But when I stitch it, I'm gonna go about an eighth inch from the edge. That's usually the stitching allowance I, I give myself. Do a little mock stitch here. The way I would do it is start right here come up and do this continuous shape all the way around without having to stop or, st or start and stop the stitch. All the way back down right there. So while we're still at the point of sketching, I just want to point out that this process is the same for something like a wallet. So let's just say you're making a card holder. You'd always uh, start out with this shape right here. So my general rule for wallets is usually to allow about a quarter of an inch on either side. And that quarter of an inch would be not the edge of the leather, but the stitching. So pretend that's stitching right there, which would mean the, the wallet is right around here. Let's keep that stitch going just for reference. This is really rough, but let's just pretend that's your leather. And uh, you wanna throw like, a, you know, a pocket on the outside that's kind of shaped like this. And so you're already getting like a, general shape of a wallet, but it all starts with the item that you're housing in whatever thing you're making. All right, forget this though. If you don't have access to Adobe Illustrator or something like it, um, or maybe you just wanna do this a little bit quicker, we could probably wrap this up right from here. I could take this same shape to a poster board, and if I was gonna do that, I would've actually started on poster board. So let's say, so let's say we're forgetting about digitizing this and, and uh, cleaning it up, and we were just gonna draw this straight on to a poster board or oak tag, something heavier duty. We could've cut this out right now 
and start cutting it out of the leather right away. So it's a pretty simple process, but I definitely like to take things into Illustrator because once you have it all drawn up, you can move the pieces and parts around just a little bit and kind of perfect the shape. And then once you have it in a vector format, we can send it off to a laser cutter or a die maker and uh, you know, we can get things made up really easily. All right, let's head over there. Oh, and just real quick before I head over there, I'm gonna get a photo of this with my phone. That's how I'm gonna transfer it into Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Illustrator 2020. Um, I'm just gonna open up a new file. I usually just go with letters since I'll probably be printing this off at some point. And I've already airdropped that photo to my computer. So color profile, whatever, and zoom out. So there's my crappy drawing. And I'm gonna embed it first. Then I'm gonna hit R and rotate it. And then I'm gonna scale it down a bit because that's way too big. That artboard is eight and a half by 11, so I'm just gonna bring it down a little bit. Now we don't know how big to make it yet. We need a frame of reference first. So um, let me just quickly go over a few things with Illustrator before we dive into it. So Illustrator is, you know, can be as complex or as simple as you make it. Uh, it's a super powerful program, but I just have a very basic knowledge of it and I'm able to get done what I need to making patterns um, Just using mostly basic shapes. You just take squares circles Triangles you round off the corners. I draw a line, you know Yeah, I'll be showing you how that all works But my point is you shouldn't need a degree in graphic design to accomplish this you can just get Illustrator or something like it and then you're using just very basic shapes to come up with a pattern. There's a few things on this drawing that we know the size of for sure, and that's the oblong hole punches, the slot punches, and the distance between those two main stitches right there, which is two inches. So I'm just gonna hit M, which brings up my shape tool, and it's in square mode right now, so I'm just gonna drag and drop. And right now it's measuring in points, and we want inches, so I'm gonna hit Command R and bring up that toolbox, or that ruler up there right click and go down to inches so I'm gonna come up to transform and tell it how big to make this rectangle we know we want it 3 eighths of an inch which is what um, 0.357 I think by 2 inches so there is our slot punch right there now it's invisible right now unless you hover over it because we don't have a stroke so I'm gonna give it a black stroke and take it up to like Two. I'm actually not going to do a stroke. I'm going to get rid of the stroke and do a fill since that's it, since it's going to be helpful to have this thing just black anyway. Okay, and then these little blue dots right here are really helpful. I use those nonstop. They're a radius tool. You drag that and you can create a radius on the corners all the way down till it basically makes an oblong hole, which is obviously really helpful in uh, Leathercraft because <laughs> I use that shape a lot. So there we have it. There's our slot punch in the exact size we need it. So I'm going to drag it over to my picture. And we actually got it pretty dang close, man. But it's not quite. So I'm going to take this and just for e just to make things not so complicated, I'm going to bring the opacity of that image down to like 40%. And then there's another metric that we want to measure. I, I think it helps to have two kind of reference points to make sure we're getting this accurate. So I'm just going to hit M again and draw a two inch wide box in between those two stitches just so we're getting the spacing right. See that was close man. That was a weird guess. Um, I'm just going to bring it down just a hair and I think we're pretty much there. So there we go. We've got the image sized appropriately or accurately. I'm just gonna delete that box because we don't need it. And then I'm gonna click on the image back here and hit Command 2, and that locks it. So now no matter where we click, it won't move that image because I just wanna draw stuff around and not have that image moving. So we've got the hole punch. I'm going to drag, actually I'm not gonna do that yet. I'll show you why later, but um, let's lay a few of these reference points down. I'm gonna hit P, which will let me draw a line with the pen tool. Hit one point here. If you hit shift, then it'll do a vertical line. It'll run right on the 
vertical axis just so you know we're not doing some weird crooked thing uh, I'm gonna hit that up the stroke to like one and then I'm gonna hit that stroke button up there and actually hit this dashed line just so it reminds me that it's a stitch because that's the stitch is actually kind of an important uh, mark for this pattern then I'm gonna hit option key and hold it while I drag this and that just created another one it's a copy so you hit option and drag and you'll copy whatever you're highlighted on I'm gonna just bring this over here I'm just kinda like making some general reference points here nothing super accurate yet and just so you know this is not gonna be like a full-blown extensive tutorial on Illustrator because there's tons of those on YouTube so if you download Illustrator for the first time I would recommend doing like a Illustrator basics kind of thing just to learn the tools and the keyboard shortcuts and stuff but I'm gonna try and uh, explain as much as I can here I'm gonna take a square I'm gonna hit M and drag from the top of this shape up here and kind of create like a rectangle down to the bottom edge of this and this is going to give me a good line for that bottom edge so I'm going to get rid of the fill because we're just going for a shape right now or a solid line I don't want a dashed line though get rid of that and hit A and that gives me um, the direct selection tool as opposed to the selection tool that means you can select like specific uh, lines or points without selecting the whole thing so use A I'm going to hit that corner and I'm gonna drag this up just to give us a nice little like rounded edge on that bottom and don't worry too much if like the line starts going off in a direction we're just trying to get basic shapes down so I'm gonna do the same thing with this one hit A and since it's a little bit different we're gonna do these individually it's gonna be a little uneven but um, and then in order to break a line and basically just end it as opposed to having this complete shape I'm gonna hit C for cut and then you just tell it right where you want to cut this line on that point and so now you can see that top corner top left corner is highlighted we don't want that section so I'm gonna hit delete a couple times and now we just have this cool little shape right here okay so then I'm gonna create another shape now you know what before we do that here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna take the M and I'm gonna make some little reference boxes this is just for like measuring sake this is this doesn't have anything to do with the final product uh, I'm gonna go down to like 0.75 it's helpful if this is a little more accurate so um, there's probably a much better way to do this by the way this is like Parker's uh, basic how I figured out illustrator version um, I want so this box I just made it a quarter of an inch wide didn't I no I didn't so I'm gonna you can see there's a little uh, number a little metric down there in that gray window that tells you how wide this box is W is 0.25 that's right where I want it so I'm gonna make it a quarter inch wide and then I'm gonna drag this out there because I just want to make sure that we have a quarter inch border around this whole thing in between the stitching and the uh, and the edge of the hole by the way I'm gonna cut this down a little bit because now we're not seeing our dashed line so I'm gonna hit that C tool again and get rid of all we really need is this bottom edge so I'm just gonna get rid of everything above it oh, lost it over here okay so now we can see our stitches again so I wanna create that kind of quarter inch bubble all around this hole so I'm going to hit option and drag if I hold shift it'll drag it in a straight line and then I'm going to copy another one down here and make it a half inch wide and this is kind of our sec second little reference point right there half inch so this one's the different or the distance from the edge to the stitch and this one is the distance from the edge of the hole to the edge of the leather so basically this line right here is where our stitch is going to be. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag this up here and rotate it by hitting R and then just turning my mouse while I'm selecting it. And I'm going to bring that up here. 
so that we know we need that same distance all the way around this hole. Because I don't know if you can tell in the drawing, but it's a little uneven. It's really narrow down here, really wide up here. I just want it to be consistent all the way around so that we don't run out of stitching room or anything. All right, I'm going to do the same thing right here. Select it, drag it down, holding option. Rotate. Kind of like that. Give us like a... It's not going to have to perfectly run along those lines, but this will just give us a good kind of frame of reference so we know if we're in the ballpark of like stitch spacing and everything. Okay, so here's why I didn't copy the oblong hole punch before. Is I'm going to take all those reference points now, select all of those and the hole, hold option, and copy that whole thing over here. But I want to flip it because, you know, this is the shorter distance that's measuring up to there, so I'm just going to reflect it. I'm going to right click, go to transform, reflect, do it on the vertical axis, and bam. There we go. Ooh, actually, let me group this so that I can select it all at the same time. So by hitting, when everything's selected, you can hit Command G and it'll group all that stuff together so that now, if I click out of it, I can click this again and they're all selected. If you want to undo that, you just hit Command Shift G and it'll ungroup everything. Okay, so. I want to line that edge of the the left side of that of this red square right here right up to that stitch and now we know that we're consistent in spacing with this side as well all right so now there's a few different ways that we can get this shape one of the easiest ways would probably just be to take the pen tool and just start tracing this outer edge I'm not super efficient with the pen tool but um, you know you can draw it however you like Oh, I forgot, I gotta go a little higher. Draw it however you'd like, and then you can take those handles and kind of mani manipulate the shape afterwards if you don't love how it sits, you know? So you can do all kinds of things like this. You can do it that way, or we can go a little bit more mathematical and make sure that there's like some symmetry here. And, and that would be to go back to the whole shape method. And I'm gonna grab my square tool and I'm gonna line up that intersect line right there and drag a square down to here, to that bottom edge of that red corner, and let go. But I'm going to hit A for the direct select and click this corner right here, and I'm just gonna drag this down because we want like a nice rounded corner on this. And it's this doing it this way is not gonna really replicate the shape that I drew on the paper. That was more of just a reference for size and make sure that like everything's laid out properly, but this is gonna give us kind of our own unique shape. A little bit more symmetrical and everything. Um, so if you like the more kind of flowy, organic lines of hand drawing it, then I would use the pen tool. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here, making sure that we're like keeping that same spacing. Looking groovy. And then I'm going to hit option and copy that over here. I'm going to do the same thing to reflect it. Right click, transform, reflect on the vertical axis. I don't know if there's a key, keyboard shortcut for that, but okay. And then I'm going to bring this right up to where? Right up to that. So it's kind of like lined up at the bottom edge of this pair of red squares and, and kind of just clipping the corner of this one up here. But now we know we're getting like consistent spacing around that slot punch on both of them. Um, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna get the pen tool now and draw us that kind of flowy top line. We'll start at this corner and just give us like a little dirty curvy. That was close. Let's do that again. Hmm. Maybe if I line it up at the center of this hole punch, it'll kind of follow more of the curve of that slot punch better. Yeah, in fact, I think I'm gonna do that, but make another break right here. So come more in the middle over here. Okay, sorry, we're gonna start over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that same thing because I was liking how it didn't have to start from here, it starts from more over here, kind of rounding the corner of this to match the, the roundness of that slot punch. So, but I'm gonna try this again. A little bit of roundness. That might have been too much. Let's just play this out. Come back over here. Let's 
It's not bad. It's a lot more flowy and angular than the, the, the one I drew, but it would definitely let you have more to grab on that knife. All right, we'll roll with it. So there's some pieces of this shape that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to select it using the A tool and hit C for cut. And we're going to cut right where this cool new line we just made, where it intersects with this one. And if you drag over it, it'll usually tell you right there is where it is. So we cut there and then cut here. I don't know where we're going to intersect on the bottom one. So select the line we don't need anymore and delete. I really like that shape we ended up with. So I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm going to select this, delete it. Sometimes you got to hit it twice because it's goofy. All right. There we go. Not bad. So we can get rid of these red squares now it's just complicating things at this point now that we have our spacing down now we want to do that same thing we just did up here where we kind of merged that line and made it flow at the top we want to do that down here maybe i can round this one out a little bit more like this i know that i'm cutting into that spacing that we talked about but i feel like i'm going to sacrifice just a little bit of spacing to help with the flow of this whole thing let's go here and get like a nice little S curvy shape. I don't like it. Do it again. All right, that's pretty close. All right, I'm gonna A select this one again, and I'm gonna hit C and just cut out where this one intersects. Select the part I don't want and delete. Same thing with this one. I'm gonna hit A, C, select it where it's intersecting oh hit the wrong one we'll just drag that over and connect it where's the anchor for this one yeah i guess that's it hit a and then i'm gonna hit command j and it'll connect that line so it's no longer two separate lines so now we gotta do the same thing over here p draw a little uh flowy S curve nope not good enough let's, let's try curving it from up here and then over to here that feels a little better a little more natural but it might be a little too tight so let's just clean it up and see if we can manipulate it after with the anchors so hit C get rid of where these intersect And by the way, this is a much more complicated process, I think, just because with a wallet, you're really just using the rectangle shape and then using that um, radius tool to round the corners off and you're just kind of stacking up the shapes. It's really easy. This one has a lot more of this, like these flowy, arky lines. So um, if you can do this, then the wallet will be a breeze. Try moving these around. Calm out that S curve right there a little bit. Okay, we're getting closer. Okay, that's not bad. I'm gonna bring this up. Maybe that'll calm out that corner a little bit. Cool, well it's definitely starting to take shape. I don't think we need the, the picture anymore. So I'm gonna hit Command Option 2 and that unlocks whatever Oh no. <laughs> so apparently command option two also stops your recording when you're using Camtasia to film your screen. I'm a little bit nervous about this line being a little too angled and sharp for the sander. That might be a little bit better. I'm just gonna connect it and angle it up just a little bit. I'm gonna save it as an AI and we can take this exact file 
and send it to a laser cutter, uh, a die maker. You can also make up your own patterns, put them up on your site to sell like we do. Uh, this is basically all we do. We save it as a PDF and then upload it to our website and it's available for sale. So there's a lot of benefits to having it as a vector file, but um, you can always just hand draw it as well and hit go right to the leather, especially if you're just doing a one-off thing. You don't plan on making a bunch of them. But I do plan on making a die out of this one. So I'm going to send this off to our die maker and we'll start clicking these things out. They're small enough that we can do it on our four ton hand press. So I'm gonna open up one of our wallets and just give you kind of a quick rundown of how we do those ones. Cause that's probably the, what the majority of you were gonna be making, I would imagine. Uh, let's pull up, I guess we'll do the trucker. I'm trying to go through and update all of our patterns now to look like this, which is just has a lot more information. You know, you got a set of instructions, you got tips. We recommend three to four ounce leather. If possible, use two to three ounce for the pockets. So we got all these things, helpful resources. You can, you know, click on these and go to the places we like to buy leather and hardware and all that kind of stuff. And we've added some dimensions in here um, to make it a little easier. You know, I just kind of threw it up willy nilly when I first started selling our patterns, uh, just pretty much the way we just built that knife sheath. And I just sold them that way. But I have realized after now a couple years of selling our patterns that it's really helpful and highly requested that we add dimensions to every little piece and uh, just just in case your printer settings are off you can always double check like you know where you're at and how it's looking this one has like a adhesive guide so you know right where to lay down the glue yeah just a little bit more information to help you out so let's say we want to make that ID window right there well we would start out with the exact size a card is. I can't remember what a card actually is. Let's just pretend this is our mock-up card. I'm gonna take this round the, you know, do the radius. And we wanna make sure, or that's an ID. We wanna make sure that fits into the ID window. So I'm going to make another square that's just a hair bigger than that. Command C, which is copy. Command F, which is paste in place. And then I'm just going to expand that one a little bit. So I'm gonna turn it into a stroke and get rid of the fill for this. I'll select this corner because we know we want a rounded corner on that one. And select this one and round out that corner. You can do the same. So like how much did we give this one? We did, let's say we'll do 0.26 and then same thing on this one, 0.26 so that it's symmetrical and even. Now I wanna probably leave about a quarter inch from the card to the stitching and then it's about an eighth of an inch from the stitching to the edge of the leather on my wallets. It's a little bit more precise on these than it is with the thick leather, like the sheath. That's why I do a quarter inch for those ones. But um, So I'm gonna make a little rectangle shape here just so I know how much an eighth of an inch is. That's 0.12. So the bottom edge of this rectangle is where the stitching is. So we want about a quarter of an inch from there to the card. I can just drag it down to meet it up to there. So I'm just kind of using shapes to help me. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna reflect this, I think. So because that'll help me, uh, that'll bring the guides down to the bottom. Reflect on the horizontal axis this time. And now I'm gonna drag, hold shift and drag this shape down to match that. So now uh, we've got the same distance, you know. Uh, on either side of the card. So we're slipping our card right in here and now I can just, I can make a shape. Let's just Command C, Command F, that same thing. Make a smaller square. This one's gonna be no fill with a stroke. And so this is the window. And I can change up the you know the aspect ratio of this since we just shrunk the card down you probably want to change it a little bit it would be kind of like that we can change the radius on the window it's probably in a pretty good place and pull the card out and bam we got our ID window and this definitely isn't perfect I would you know if I was making this for a real wallet I would probably spend a little bit more time on this to perfect it but see we got the same shape here and the stitch will basically just run around the three sides here leaving this one open 
and we can do the same thing with these you know we can this is all just shapes like this shape right here is really easy to make because you start out with a square let's just say this is our T slot that we're trying to make you can hit E and it brings up this little window over here I'm gonna hit that middle one the perspective distort and I can just drag the bottom two corners down like that and now we got a nice like T slot shape and of course we don't need that to be a uh, fill so we're gonna bring in some stroke and then I would just decide you know how wide I want those tabs Oops. and then I would just like draw my you know whatever pocket shape you want to do and then do the same thing I'm doing this really quick and sloppy obviously but this is how it's done so then you start breaking up those lines refining it a little bit and you've got all these basic shapes that you need so it's just a matter of like making shapes cutting the paths uh rounding out corners it's really a simple simple process but by the time you're done you go oh man that actually looks kind of complex you know even me being such a illustrator and graphic design noob um, i'm still able to get through this stuff pretty quick even with like the free hand like i just took a pen tool and just kind of drew this out if you haven't tested out and played with illustrator i would recommend it it's an amazing powerful program we're just scratching the surface here there's probably much better ways to do it like i said but so much of what i do in leathercraft is just like trying to muddle my way through it and figure it out and you know usually we, we can usually get by and make it work so don't be intimidated by it just try it out make some shapes see what you can do and uh, if you have any questions leave some in the comments i think that's it thanks for watching guys bye Hey, quick update I ended up making one of these out of that pattern that we just made and uh, I just wanted to address a couple of the changes I would make to it uh, do you remember when I measured the distance from these two stitches I rounded it up to two inches and I think that it would actually be better to just keep it right where it was um, an inch and three quarters I got my partner in crime here today he's helping me out how about yeah say hi hi <laughs> the main reason is when I have it in the sheath, it actually fits really nicely, but as soon as you turn it upside down, give it a little shake, the knife comes out. And if I start doing lots of somersaults like I usually do, or front flips, back flips, I don't want that thing coming out. So I adjusted the pattern on the file. Hey, you stop that. You stop that. You stop that. Hey! What did I say? So you'll notice when you go to download the file, I've already updated it. The other thing is that I mentioned I like the... <laughs> the other thing is that I mentioned I like these... Uh, what are these called? Bob, what are these called? These holes? Um, I don't know. I also mentioned when I was making the pattern that I like these belt loop holes to be two inches long. And I've done that on holsters before in the past and liked it, but uh, when I put this one on my belt, it moved around too much. So I'm going to change it up to be an inch and three quarters and probably by 5 16 instead of 3 8 wide. And I think that'll just be... But other than those couple changes, it turned out really nice. <laughs>